What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York. We are back at the Knitting Factory for Tech Death Tuesday, and we're here with Scott of Felucia. Thank you so much for your time today, man. What's up, man? Yeah, It's awesome to have you here. Your newest record is Undying Light, which is absolutely awesome. Do you consider this like just an appropriate follow-up to Dreamless, or do you think that this record is like a new beginning or a new start for Felucia? Definitely a new beginning. It's not a follow-up to Dreamless. I think Dreamless was more of a follow-up to the album before. Mm -hmm. Honestly, both albums were written kind of consecutively, The Flesh Prevails and Dreamless. And this was written after like a year of touring and member changes and a new singer and a kind of completely different approach to how we write the music. So yeah, it's definitely like a a new beginning for the band. Well, I always thought that your music is very experimental. Like you have sure. progressive elements, tech death elements, traditional death metal. I feel like it has to be a little bit easier to try new things when making a new album, right? Yeah, I suppose. I don't know. I'm just, I guess with this one, I just like wanted to, I just went with what I wanted to hear, basically. I wasn't like trying to attempt a bunch of crazy stuff that, you know, I just wanted to make good music that sounded good and, you know, had the Fallujah sound to it. Yeah. Had these big haunting leads and kind of put you into a trance rather than, you know, trying to make stuff that's like super chaotic and, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, just like, ooh, look at me, look at me. I was more trying to make good sounding music that yeah. I would listen to and kind of zone out to. Yeah, you focus on the entire song, not just the solo or like... Or definitely, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Whereas like, you know, our first album... Uh, wrote that when we were like 17 or something you know mm -hmm. you're thinking like oh I got to challenge myself I got to do the craziest things possible and when you do that sometimes it kind of turns into a riff salad or something mm -hmm. you know, you know riff I mean? salad that's a you really I mean? good way of putting it yeah it doesn't really have its own soul it just is like a compilation of riffs yeah, yeah. now you mentioned uh, you know for Undying Light you have a new singer Antonio did he bring some newer elements to Fallujah uh, that maybe uh, the other records didn't have uh, for sure I mean just like just like the things that we're doing on records you know he's got like pitch vocals he sings and he's got his own kind of like chaotic vibe to his voice it's kind of more like a black metal kind of more grindy more converged sounding kind of vibe whereas before we were kind of like death metal growls over all the music so to me it kind of like fits over the music a little bit better because you know what i mean the music's yeah. really emotional and aggressive and like very atmospheric have, yeah and to have the the vocals be just as dynamic like that's really awesome for me and that's why we chose them you know we, we were able to look at tons of singers and could have made a bunch of different decisions on who we were going to get and what path we took and to us he was the perfect fit yeah and he's also you know the perfect fit as like uh, a member as well you know I've known this guy for years you know he fits perfect in the band awesome yeah. when it comes to songwriting do you have to put yourself in a certain element for inspiration to come or does like inspiration sometimes just come out of nowhere uh i just kind of you can't like sit down and just be like i hope i get inspired right now you kind of just have to capture it where you see it you know what i mean maybe you're watching a movie or you know you're listening to some music and it gives you an idea or it inspires a concept. I'll just write that down in my notebook. You know what I mean? So when I finally do sit down, I have like a list of ideas that I want to attempt. You know what I mean? Because that's a whole other part of the process. You may have had a cool idea and you try to put it down, try to record it and program some drums to it and kind of bring it to life. And then it turns out being not as cool as you thought it was in your head and you kind of just move on to the next thing. So as long as I have like a good long list of things that I want to try and work out, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then I'm good. Yeah, do you follow a music theory at all behind your like your guitar playing? Like you you know what scale you're working off of or what key you're playing in? For sure, yeah. Yeah, does that like help at all knowing like some theory or is it uh, kind of unnecessary for the style of music you play? It's kind of just like color to me. You know what I mean? The different scales you use and the different ways you can modulate into different keys. It's more just like like I compare it to like painting. It's just picking the colors. You know what I mean? Is it going to yeah. be kind of this tone or is it going to be this tone? Where I think the real songwriting happens with like, you know, like how you balance like the structure and like, you know, the kind of the momentum and the foreground and background, like the scales and the theory just kind of color like the rhythmic ideas that you're putting out and really, yeah. yeah, to me the cool stuff is like when you do, you come up with some kind of like cool rhythmic idea, like there's entire genres defined by just what the beat is if you think about it and like yeah. most music, like if it has this kind of beat, it's this kind of music, you know what I mean? So to me, I always focus on the rhythm more than the color because the color is just 
that's how we kind of already have established that with the band, the kind of colors we like to use, you know what yeah. I mean, with the music, you know. Interesting. Yeah. When it comes to playing your material live, is it a completely different energy than just simply like sitting in the studio or a practice space? Or is there maybe like a similar approach that you have in the live presence as like opposed to when you're like rehearsing or something like that? Mm -hmm. I think when I was younger and just kind of nerding out on a computer, we were doing all sorts of crazy things. And then, you know, I, th I think we did our first tour when we were 18 and most of us are like around the 28 age. So we kind of figure out what stuff is really cool to do live and what kind of stuff is a little more gratuitous and doesn't really like come across well you know what i mean so i think that when we're writing we're always thinking about like how is this going to sound when we finally get on a stage you know what i mean and it's and i think about the clubs that we're playing and then i think about some of the big stages we'll be on like how's this part going to come across is this not going to come across well and you know what i mean you, you got to put more air into your music you can't just be like blast and kick and riffs all the time because that gets like uh tiresome live when it's nice and big and clear you need a lot of you know space in between things yeah absolutely which is definitely what we did with our newer album yeah and you also need a crowd interaction as well i figured that's totally like a yeah yeah talent that you have to have yeah. when playing on stage you know sometimes we do stuff just because we want to like putting a whole song in five four but when you play that live sometimes people aren't good at headbang at 5-4 it's not as fun but you know you do stuff for yourself and then you do stuff for the crowd you kind of have a good balance absolutely here's one question i really want to ask you it's my favorite question to ask every artist because it's always the hardest question for everybody to answer mm. how do you know when a song is done uh when it feels balanced like for me it's kind of weird i can kind of zoom out of my project and kind of see the whole song at once and be like okay i see the structure what i did here how i started the song and uh, where I did, you know, a cycle, like kind of got back to a chorus or back to a verse and were able to repeat motifs. Like for me, the song has to have kind of a, like its own soul to it, you know what I mean? And I think you can do that by pushing like rhythmic motifs and melodic motifs throughout like the music, kind of interweaving it and like not trying to make it too, you know, try to make it uh, kind of nifty, I guess is the word, and, but still give it its own sound, you know what I mean? And then when you go to a new song, you know, you use entirely separate motifs for that song. And once I see that, like, okay, the song has really established itself and it's kind of run its course and I did something kind of interesting with the song and it feels finished to me. Awesome. Yeah. That's a great way of putting it. Everybody yeah. normally just says, oh, when I get the final mix back or something like when that. When it's done. Yeah. I don't know. When it hits three and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. And uh, the final question I wanted to ask you is, I feel like Fallujah has played with a variety of different, you, you are a very heavy band, but like I feel like you have played with like a variety of different types of heavy bands. I forgot what year it is, but you were on Summer Slaughter at one point. I think yeah. it was 2014 with Morbid Angel. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. With, you know, traditional death metal, but you're on, but then you played with like death core bands like Thy Art is Murder and Carnifex, yeah. and now you're on like a strict death, uh, technical death metal tour with Beyond Creation. Have you noticed like a different type of crowd reaction or is it totally. like a different vibe? Yeah, totally. Honestly, I'm having a lot of fun on this tour. This is kind of, you know, it's a very musician forward kind of tour. Like most of the people in the crowd are musicians and, you know, like the kind of music that's being played everybody's kind of nerding out in the in the back room and talking to each other about guitar it's kind of just like how we we did a tour with obscuro it's kind of the same yeah. vibe these people like you know have to spend a lot of time practicing to play this music and then you know there's like when we go out with deathcore bands it's you know it's a different kind of crowd like the crowd is like looking for something different and usually we just try to be ourselves and like i feel like the band's dynamic enough to where like people are going to find something that they like you know what i mean like this crowd is is looking at the musicianship in my from what i'm seeing and Absolutely. like there's other crowds that are just just want to feel the vibe you know what i mean feel the beat which yeah. is honestly i prefer that crowd or i just tell myself all crowds are like that because i can't like this is the crowd where everybody's got their cell phone out and they're waiting for you to miss a 16th note or something <laughs> yeah, i just pretend like no one cares <laughs> one of the more pressuring crowds yes i don't care either way there you go or yeah. like the movie whiplash like oh, not yeah. my fucking tempo yeah when that movie first came out i don't think i've been to one concert where somebody was doing the last drum mic tech without somebody screaming that oh in the God. audience that's hilarious i love that movie it was so good yeah they got to make like a tech death version of that movie yes they just, did but no one cares and no one's in the auditorium that's <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> so before we go i want to thank you so much for your time today is there just uh, anything else you would like to promote for the undying light record cycle this will be uploaded by midnight so if it hasn't been announced yet uh probably best not to say it on here yeah no i mean check out the album we are on tour so 
depending on what country you're, country you're in, just look at our dates and see if we're coming to you because we're going to be touring nonstop for the next couple of years and until we put out our next record. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Scott. Thank you, Alex. Of course. Everybody, we are here with Scott of Fallujah, Undying Light. Be sure to pick that up if you haven't already. This is Alex from Heavy New York. We'll see you next time.